Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Checking in on the market, it looks like SPY is forming a bit of a bear flag again. Very similar down here where we had the bullish attempt with the lower wick, lack of a follow through day, and another leg down. So here we are with another weak bounce attempt, knowing that anything under 284.20 is just a lower high on the daily time frame, is keeping the bears comfortable. So at this point, oil hourly RSI is oversold, or a daily RSI, which we'll look at in just a second. But now we have to see, is SPY going to join with another leg down and get daily oversold RSI as well? So for me personally, as a trader, I do well with oversold bounces. It's definitely playing counter trend. It's not good for newer traders to be trading counter trend, but I have enough historical evidence that shows me that's one of my edges. So in this kind of scenario, I'm patiently waiting for oil and SPY to be daily oversold, and I'm looking to play oversold bounces so i'm looking at really beat up names like nvda or tesla and when spy gets any kind of meaningful bounce i'm looking for those names to get a bit of a magnified bounce because there'll be more shorts covering we're more extended to the downside and in my opinion it'll be a bit easier for the bulls to put together some bigger gains than it would be for the market as a whole so what my strategy is is to find shorter term setups that favor bullish entries and then set stop losses with very little risk so we'll go back to SPY in just a second. But for Tesla today, I was watching the two minute time frame and I saw a falling wedge pattern. And I entered that pattern bullish when it broke. So here was the play that I was looking at. We had a clear lower high pattern on the two minute time frame. And we had a base of support that was holding as well. So the range got tighter and tighter. We got the bull break. I made my entry in the mid to upper 187s. And then from there, after the bounce gets followed through, I could either lock in for a, a small gain, a day trade gain. It would have been worth it if I were looking for just a day maker kind of gain, but I'm looking for a more significant bounce. And knowing that, I just set my stop loss at break even. So we ended up coming back down and triggering my stop loss. And that's that. So I lost absolutely nothing. I gave myself the opportunity to potentially see the start of a more meaningful daily oversold bounce. And I'm going to look for tomorrow for the same kind of setup. Daily time frame for Tesla has a lower high each day for the last bunch of days in a row. And we rejected this morning first thing by 13 cents. So a bit of a double top the last two days, a daily inside bar today. Things getting really tight. But I like how every time we're hitting a lower low, we're not getting much follow through, which is essentially what a falling wedge is. But the bottom line is that's just an example of my strategy where I put myself in short term positions that have very low risk and give myself the opportunity to potentially ride out a longer term bounce. And just pulling up NVDA while we're on it, the daily RSI at this point is absolutely crushed down at 20. We've seen a lower high every single day, six days in a row, six red days in a row. The weekly time frame has been pulling back very significantly, and I'm watching for the bulls to defend our monthly support down at 124.46, at least temporarily for a daily oversold bounce to play out. So that's what my mindset, that's where my mindset is. Every morning as I approach, I establish a game plan to try and establish these bounce positions and other players, other traders are going to be trading with the trend and they might be waiting for an oversold bounce to enter bearish again. And that's perfectly fine as well. Certainly would rather be playing with the trend if you are just any old trader. But again, it's just me specifically and what I like to do and what my style is. So looking back at SPY, the bears have... Complete control at this point, the four hour time frame, very clear lower highs and lower lows. And for the bulls to change any kind of momentum, we have to change it on the daily time frame. So even if we see a solid green day tomorrow, we're still just going to look for a lower high compared to 284.20. So the bulls do have a lot of work to do. IWM on the daily time frame is still weak, down to lower lows at this point. Anything on the daily under 150.165 is just a lower high. Bulls have a lot of work here as well. We're not oversold yet, but if we get another leg down, and head down towards 146, that daily RSI will be heading to oversold. QQQ, same story. Weak bounce attempt. Anything under 179.85 is just a lower high. And if we see another leg down, that daily RSI 
will be getting to oversold. This is a weak bounce at this point. There's potential bear flags on a lot of these setups, and the bulls certainly don't have a whole lot of confidence as of right now. XLF held support, but it's a weak bounce. You get the idea. Everybody's doing the same thing. The correlation is so strong here. So 2687 is resistance. Anything under that is a lower high. And the weekly time frame for XLF is still an uptrend. So most names that we just looked at, SPY, IWM, QQQ, they've all taken out weekly support, but XLF has not. And that is notable for me. And we're going to be watching for an equilibrium on XLF. If 2508 can hold, we'll look for a higher low. And then we'll look for a bounce and a lower high compared to 2814. XLV still held support as well. So XLF and XLV have to turn things around for these bulls and try and build off the support that they do have because other names don't have any nearby support to be going off of. But we have the double bottom that got a little bit of bounce follow through. Anything under 90.18 is just a lower high. Bulls want to make their way up towards 89 to at least get back to the middle of this tightening range. Because if this support level were to break, that would be a scenario that would accelerate SPY to those daily oversold conditions. XBI got a more convincing bear break of its supports. But we do still have this level down here at 80.17. And that held today but just barely. Anything on the daily under 83.77 is just a lower high. We've been trading within this range for essentially nine days in a row, and bulls have to defend this support tomorrow to try and stay within this channel. Otherwise, we see another leg down with the next support at 79.34. So the VIX with this action, surprising that it was red today, but we did see SPY green most of the day before some second half of the day weakness. So the bulls are looking to form a higher low because at this point, the VIX bulls have gone from 1440 up to 19 and did not establish a higher low along the way. So now we're pulling back for a daily higher low to try and form. And this is to confirm the daily trend change. So we had a daily lower high and lower low consolidation. We've broken resistance at this point, but to confirm the daily trend change, we need the higher low and higher high. And that's what the bulls are going to be going for. The volatility bulls, that is. That's what they're going to be going for over the next few days. And if SPY were to get any kind of oversold bounce going, it's going to all be all about 1440, this low on VIX. So oil, again, is telling the story. Solid bounce yesterday, essentially a double top. We broke resistance by 12 cents. That's not meaningful in any way. And we pulled back real hard in reaction to the inventory report and closed at the low of the day. So the daily RSI is just now getting oversold. The weekly time frame, break of 60, certainly getting follow through at this point. Next level is 54.50 as far as support goes. And the monthly equilibrium is continuing to shape up as we're looking for the lower $50 range as a potential target for the monthly higher low to form. That being said, now that we're getting close to daily oversold, Again, I'm going to be watching for oversold bounces, and I'll probably do the same thing on oil if I get a setup that I like as far as and getting a short-term position that allows me some comfortability for a stop loss and then hoping that bounce gets more follow-through because the daily RSI is approaching oversold. If we see more weakness tomorrow, the four-hour RSI will be oversold. The hourly would be oversold. I want to see as many time frames oversold as possible, the daily, the four-hour, the hourly, and if all three of those are oversold, then I start looking for those short-term bounces. Because again, if we cool off the hourly RSI, set my stop loss at break even, then I have the chance to see if it's an actual bounce with follow through on the longer term timeframes. And natural gas, a bear pullback here. We have the double bottom of 2531 breaking, not a ton of follow through, but as far as I'm concerned, that does confirm a lower high and lower low now. So we're still looking at this weekly consolidation and it's all about 2442 and whether or not the bulls are able to hold that level to try and form a weekly higher low to try and see a weekly trend change. A long way to go for the natural gas bulls at this point. Just have to hold that support to try and form that higher low. So bottom line, bears still have control. If you have cash or if you are looking bullish, we're patiently waiting. We can absolutely see another leg down on SPY to get daily oversold and join oil. And we certainly don't want to be rushing in too early to be making these bullish entries. I'm certainly not looking for bearish entries at this point. If people are already in bearish positions, they're certainly comfortable. They're either using the hourly downtrend as a, an exit signal, the daily downtrend as an exit signal. Depends on the game plan overall. But where we stand right now, if choosing a direction, for me, the direction to choose is looking bullish. But again, that, that might mean I don't 
do anything for two, three days into next week, depending on what setup we get every single day. And that's why I put in over an hour pre-market every morning for establishing setups, getting a clear picture of what every sector is doing, noting key levels and taking it from there. So I appreciate you watching. We'll check back in over the weekend. No end of the video video today. I'll go and do a garden update over the weekend. Things are certainly growing fast these days. It's hot out there. And I hope you have a good rest of your night.